Welcome to the DL. This is the show where we talk about everything in the truck and equipment repair industry. It's my job to help inform and educate you on ways to help your business. We talk with technicians, business owners, associations, industry experts, manufacturers, and even a few you wouldn't think traditionally apply to your business. Welcome everyone to another episode of the DL. I am your host, Tyler Robertson. I'm also the CEO and founder of a company called Diesel Laptops. I know I say that every episode, but I say that because what I'm really passionate about, yeah, I'm passionate about diesel laptops, but what I'm really passionate about is entrepreneurship, success stories, failure stories, those types of things. I think everyone always looks at someone and man, how did they get there? what they go through in life? I've shared a lot of my story with everyone. I was just on Freight Waves not long ago talking about how I got kicked out of college. I got fired from a job. I got asked to resign from another job. Yet here I am standing today building something over here at Diesel Laptop. So I love talking about stories. I love talking to entrepreneurs. And even more so, I always love it when it can be someone in my own industry that we get to talk to. So today, with all of that said, I hopefully I haven't broken them up here too much. I have Kenneth Carter III, or we'll call him Kenny as we go through this. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. How are you doing? You know what? I'm doing good. And I think I think you have a kind of an interesting story that may resonate with a lot of people. So what I'd like to do is just kind of walk walk through your your career. And let's just talk about these different points in your life because things sound like they started out really, really good. High school's done. And and where where did where did high school go? Why don't you just kind of pick up from there and kind of explain, you know, where where your journey started off? Okay, well, straight out of high school into the military, probably two or three months after I graduated, went straight to the army to be a truck driver. So it was really good. Like like you said, it was good beginnings. And I did that for three years and got out and continued to drive trucks locally. And I never done the over, over the road thing. I always like to be local, stay home with the family. <clears throat> and um, just got tired of driving for a while. And then I started drinking a little bit and then a little bit turned to a lot more. And uh, that's kind of where it started. Yeah, I, I I can say, you know, and we're gonna talk about the story here with everyone, but I was telling you before we started this thing, man, I, I, I mentioned here in the intro, like I got, I did great. I did okay in high school, got into a college, probably better college than I should have gotten into. Then I never went to class <laughs> and I got kicked out, right? So, so, you know, I'm 20 years old and got kicked out of college and, and that whole thing. Um, the military, by the way, thank you for your service and everything. I, it's always so great when we can, you know, talk about that kind of stuff and uh, appreciate what you guys do for the country. Um, but you're you're now in you're in the military. You get out. Uh, you go into just civilian life. You're you're driving truck, and it sounds like um, you, like you said you kind of alluded to it. You started drinking probably a little too much. I think I still do that on the weekends too much. Uh, <laughs> but then it sounds like some bad decisions kind of happened um, eventually there as as you're kind of progressing. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely. So uh, like I said, the drinking was uh, you know on the weekends. Then it turned to three or four days a week. Then it turned to six days a week. And then with the drinking, uh, started with the partying and the clubs, going to the clubs a lot. And then I was introduced to um, cocaine, which a uh, neighbor told me, hey, you know, this will help you sober up. And uh, I tried it. It was really good at the time. And I was like, you know what? I need more of this. So I guess thinking like an entrepreneur, I started selling it and started to sell it. And I did that for five years and the selling just turned to using and it was just kind of downhill from there. But it was never a, a goal or a vision or no mission in my life. And I just kind of kept kept that up six days a week going out partying and living what I thought was the good life. Yeah. So I, you know, I can't obviously relate to your thing. I can just tell you like another kind of personal story here. So my uncle, uh, by the way, my, my favorite uncle that I had, like he was the he was the guy telling the jokes at all the family get togethers and everything, the uncle you wanted to hang out with. Um, he actually ended up going to prison for for armed robbery. And it was a guy like you'd never expect that out of him, but it was just, you know, he, he got really, in his case, it, was, it wasn't drugs, it was more into gambling and gambling debts and, you know, kind of getting that spiral. And those are really hard things, I think, for a lot of people to get out of until you kind of you kind of hit a point where it, it really doesn't get any worse. So you're you're doing this whole thing and it sounds like it did end up getting worse for you at, at eventually there. Yes, <laughs> really bad, really fast. <clears throat> so um, 
I was now facing 90 years in prison for uh, two traffickings and two selling deliveries. I ended up selling to an undercover cop. Um, I don't like to use the term set up, but I had a friend that kind of linked me up with this person and uh, he ended up being an undercover cop. I sold to him twice, got busted for that. I was out, out on bond for a year and a half and I still continue doing the exact same thing I was doing the day before I got locked up. So I, at that time, I still didn't learn my lesson. Did, did you think you were just going to get away with it or you weren't worried about the consequences because things hadn't happened yet? Or why, why did you keep going down that path even though obviously you just got arrested for it? Uh, there was no consequences at the time. Yeah. Uh, my sister was a bail bondsman. I got out in a couple hours. So to me, it really didn't happen in a sense. I know that sounds crazy, but I was out so fast and life was still going. And uh, I just, I, I was oblivious to the law, first of all. And I didn't know how much time I was facing at the time. And I figured like, if I just didn't do anything about it, it'd go away. Yeah, you know, and I don't, I don't wanna relate that to what you see in life, but you see that all the time. So a perfect example can be COVID. There's this really serious thing going on. Half a million Americans have died and some people are still, eh, I don't believe it, it doesn't affect me, it doesn't do this. I mean, I've lost, I, my wife lost an uncle to it. Actually two uncles now it sounds like. It, it's a serious thing, but until you, until a lot of people see it happen to them and go through it, they just kind of get oblivious to the, to the whole situation. But uh, obviously the legal system catches up to the enforcement division, right, of the government pretty, pretty quick. So you actually ended up getting, having to go to jail here for a little bit because of this whole thing. Yep, yep. Uh, time ran out real quick, especially when you're not planning it. So I, um, <clears throat> I ended up getting sentenced to three years. I took a plea deal, which was way better than 90. I think that was the, the trick. You know, tell him 90, he'll plead out to the three. <laughs> but I plead out to the three years, and a week later, I went in. And I, while being there, for the first couple months, I was just playing cards and hanging out and, I guess, chilling, in, in a sense. And then I sat back one day, and I realized, you know, if I keep playing cards, that's all I'm going to do is become a, the best uh, space player there is. So I, I said, you know, I got to do something different. And I started going to the library and reading different books. And one the books, the type of books that got to me was uh, self-help books. So I realized I took a, a look at my past and realized that I wasn't a happy person. I really wasn't pleasing anyone. And um, I really didn't know who I was. Well, I can tell a lot of that really took hold because I see your post now on LinkedIn. You're at the gym. You're talking about eating healthy, being mindful, all these things that people should be doing. Do you... Do you remember that point where that just happened? You're like, man, I'm fixing this and it's starting today. Or was it kind of a gradual thing as it was going along? Or do you remember kind of walking through how that happened? Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, it wasn't gradual. It was just right then and there. So uh, like I said, I looked in the mirror or the makeshift mirror they have. And I, I actually looked at myself and realized, you know what? You're in prison. You got to do something about this. And so I went down to the library and I got some self-help books and I started reading the self-help books. And it sounds crazy, but I had this out of body experience and I looked at myself and was seeing who I was wearing this uniform, you know, coming from a military uniform to a prison uniform is totally different. It's going from being looked up to, to look down on. And that's what, that's what kicked me into high gear. And so I just started to read more and more self-help books and I developed a list of weaknesses that I had, you know, I could come up with a thousand strengths, but the weaknesses was the, the hard part. Because you have to be honest with yourself and start looking at everything objectively, and uh, that's that's how I started, you know, with the self help. Yeah, so I mean, I'm going through a little bit of that journey myself. So a year ago, I'm about 30, 35 pounds heavier than I am, and it was the same thing. I'm like, why, why, why is this? Like, what's wrong with me? Why can't I? Why can't I fix this part of my life? I'm successful at business. I got a great wife. I got great kids. I got friends. Like, what, what is, what is my problem here? And at the end of the day, you look in the mirror and you're like, it's me. It's, it's me the problem. I got to figure out how to deal with this. So same thing. Read books. You know, message forums. All these things you do to try to try to learn and educate yourself and get more mindful of what you have going on and everything. But you know, kind of back to you. So now I'm assuming you're, you're kind of know your prison sentence is coming up soon, right? Do you, are you thinking the whole time, like, what am I going to do when I get out? Or when, when does that whole process start? And where was your mind going at this point to try to figure uh, out what the next chapter looks like? Uh, I've never thought about going to prison, even up to the day. As somewhere in my mind, I was like, oh, you know what? I won't go. Even though I was sentenced and I was definitely going in, I still was telling myself, oh, you're not going to go. You're not going to go. Because I've been, I've beat I, I beat the odds so many times 
I've had great jobs, you know, the military out of high school. And I felt like I was always lucky, but uh, that catches up with you real quick. And I didn't realize that I was there for a couple months. And that's what I said, okay, you know, this is real. I'm not getting out and uh, I have to do something different and something better. So what happens? Your 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 time's up, and they just release you. Is it like the movies? You just kind of like open the gate, and be like, "Here you go." Or, but the, what what do you do then? Like, how did you did you have a plan on what was going to happen after after prison? Oh yeah, definitely. So um, about six months in, I realized that um, I didn't want to be a felon. I mean, it's inevitable, but uh, I wasn't going to become a felon. So I would not walk out those gates and say I'm a felon and look for a job after my extensive work history and skills. And they tell me I can't get the job because I'm a felon. So I refused to, to take that, that route. So I started to develop business plans and I started with a trucking company. And then I realized that uh, freight brokering was more feasible and more on my level because uh, I like to think things out and be strategic. So uh, I started developing business plans and started making systems. And I had every department written out. I had stacks and stacks of books, I'm sorry, paper of everything that I needed. So once I got to work release and we have a cell phone there, I started making sales calls. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make some sales calls even though I don't have a business yet. Just to get over those those nervous jitters. Yeah. And, and and it was tough and it was hard in the beginning, especially not being, I guess, you can't tell them you don't have a business, so you have to act like you do. But I guess I was faking it till I made it. So do you remember your first couple sales calls at all? Like how, how the conversations <laughs> went? Yes, I do. Uh, <laughs> how, bad, how, how bad was it? Very bad. <laughs> I don't even know what to say when they answer the phone. I'm like, uh, hello? <laughs> like, <laughs> they the, the, already said hello. <laughs> the, the only reason I bring that up is because I, so just uh, my sister-in-law works for us, right? She's one of our top salespeople today, but she came out of the hospitality industry. She was literally working at restaurants and managing restaurants. I mean, she started as a waiter and hostess and all that, but she, she worked her way up. Um, but then she she kind of got sick of the nights and the weekends and wanted to start a family and all that stuff. So I'm like, oh, come sell for us. And we put everyone at the time she was our first one. We're like, okay, she knows nothing about the industry. Let's train her up, and we'll train her for about a month, and then we'll let her talk to customers. And I, I remember after about a month, she's like, I think I got this. I think I got this. And then I remember talking to her after about the first week when we just kind of like start making calls. She came to me, she's like, I have no idea what I'm talking about. And I'm horrible. <laughs> They're gonna remember me. I'm just losing customers. I'm never gonna get. And I'm like, I'm like, Jess, they are they are so busy in their day-to-day -day life. I guarantee when you call them up six months from now, they're not going to remember you one bit and you can just start the whole thing over again. Oh yeah. So, yeah. It, she, she, I remember talking to her like a year later, she goes, you know what? You told me that. And you were right. One of those people that literally hung up on me and said, I'd never buy from you. She goes, that person actually called me like three months ago and was like, I've heard great things about your company. I want to buy your product. And he had no idea <laughs> he blew me off before. So I'm like, it just, it, it's the way things work. You got to build up that knowledge and experience and, and get it down and everything. So, so that's pretty awesome. So you're just kind of like, hey, I'm gonna start just making phone calls and figuring out how this whole brokerage thing works and how the conversations go. And uh, was this so? This is when you just got out of work release, but you did also get a full time job then as well. Or how did how did it play out once you got out? Yeah. So I was in work release when I was making those calls. Okay. So I was still in prison. And um, when I got out, I had a job lined up from a previous employer, and that's why I, I was working at prior to yesterday. But uh, they gave me a full-time job. So in work release, I worked there and uh, it drove me crazy because I couldn't drive trucks. So I just had to kind of be a warehouse guy. And as soon as I got out, I got a significant raise, obviously, and started driving trucks again. And I was there for a year until yesterday. So just literally yesterday, you quit your job full-time. You've been planning this, it sounds like, for quite a while then and everything. So day one, how was day one? I got to ask, because I remember the first time I quit my regular job to start diesel laptops and I was scared as hell because I had a wife, <laughs> I had two kids and I'm the only income bringer, right? So my wife was always been a stay at home mom. So how, how did day one go for you under your, your new brokerage business? Uh, day one uh, did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've been working, in, I've been in business for a year, uh, but just slowly here and there doing some work, putting about five hours in a week. I'm waking up at 3.30, 3.45 every morning, uh, going to the uh, working on the business, then going to the gym, come back home, go to work, get off of work, and I work on the business. But it wasn't enough time. So I just figured, you know what, yesterday I won't do anything. Today I'll get back on it. 
and I feel great. There's no anxiety. I was getting stressed just going to work just because it was working with someone else and taking up so much of my time. Yeah. So do you follow Chris Jolly at all on LinkedIn or through some of the stuff he does? He's got a podcast show, a freight coach. Have you heard of him or do you follow him at all? Oh uh, yeah, that's my buddy. I've actually been on his show. Okay. Yeah. So I, I had, I had Chris on earlier this year in the summer and you know, he basically made the comment like, Hey man, I, I you know, he quit his job and he's doing this, this freight coach thing. And I remember him saying in the summer, like, oh man, I don't know how much money I got. I, I'm burning through my money quick. I don't know how long I can keep this dream going for and everything. So, uh, you know, I've been following him ever since. He's a great guy. I love what he's doing over there. Um, and I, I actually hit him up yesterday and I'm, I just, you know, just texting like, hey man, how are things going? Like, it's been a while. It sounds like you got a lot of engagement going on social media. I see all over the place. And he goes, honestly, he goes, once I fully committed and I just kind of went all in on this thing. He goes, things have just been great and taken off and business is doing well and all those things. So it's always a grind, I think, with, with any entrepreneur. Um, so you, you said you've been kind of planning this whole thing for a year. Do you, have, do you have clients already or is it just dialing people, trying to line things up still? Where, where are you at in the business side of this thing? Yeah, so I have clients already, but they're here and there, one-off shipments. So it's not enough to, be, uh, to, to sustain me just with those so i'm still doing sales calls i have five agents that i put on two or three weeks ago so they're making calls all day and i'm really doing a lot of business development and reaching out and i'm um, also like you know with my linkedin doing a lot of promotional stuff with uh positivity and i'm working with a, a lady named Rhonda. so we're kind of doing our thing with, uh, with the health and wellness so i'm just kind of like finding my place you know as, as a broker and finding my brand yeah, so it's amazing for me because I grew up and I've only worked on the truck repair side. So I know what happens when things break down on the road. I had no real idea how freight actually moved from point A to B. So I had Chris <laughs> come on here earlier in the year, like, just explain to me how this works. Like, why do I need a broker? How, do, how does this whole thing work? So he, he, did a, he did a very, very great job with it and everything. So what's the, what's like the next three to six months look like for you now? You started, it sounds like you brought some agents on. I'm sure you get some commission plans set up for those guys. Where yes. do you have some goals or ambitions or things you want to cross off the list here in the next couple months to get this thing going? Well, in the next three to six months, I plan to at least make about a thousand dollars a month. That's it's gonna I'm gonna be realistic and start off small, get a thousand dollars a month coming in. So my uh, fiance she can start working as well because she's pretty much holding it down and supporting me uh, doing this and um, <clears throat> just pretty much just get my name out there more and build up build up my uh, health and wellness plan. Cause I'm doing a, we're working on a nonprofit called Supply Chain Fit, which is like helping out the drivers become healthier. So that's my fitness side, like you were saying, I like the workout and things like that. So I'm just kind of putting those two together and trying to let them work hand in hand. Well, it really sounds like from just talking to you, you, you did some stuff in the past you shouldn't have done and you got caught and you did your time. And it, it sounds like though, the way you're talking is, you came out like a totally different person with a different mindset and a different attitude. So if there's people listening to this that are doing things they shouldn't be, is there any advice you'd give to younger people at this point or people that are kind of on that path that maybe you were on if they happen to be listening? Like what, what would you tell them if you had a chance to do that? Um, I would say to uh, look for your potential. You know, what you're doing now, if it's bad or if it's wrong or illegal or immoral, it's not your potential. So you can do something way bigger and better just, you just got to dream big and uh, just do it no matter what people say. So I remember distinctively sitting in a, at a bar with uh, the, the company I used to work for. It was the owner of the company. This is like my first year there. So it's like, you know, 15, 16, maybe 20 years ago. I lose track of years now. You're telling uh, your age. Yeah. <laughs> but, we're, but we're sitting there, right? And this guy's literally a multimillionaire many times over. And I'm, you know, I'm a service manager. You know, I'm, I'm doing okay and all that stuff. I'm in my, you know, late 20s. And I just remember him sitting there, because also like conversation of money came up or whatever. And he just looked at me and goes, Tyler, you just need to realize there are a million ways to make money in this world. You just need to figure out which one of those really is going to make you happy and which one of those are going to be really good at. And I, I kind of always remembered that in my voice. I'm like, God, there, there are a lot of ways to make money in this <laughs> world, right? I mean, so you're a broker, you don't own trucks, but you can still make money hauling freight with trucks, right? So, and it comes down to a lot. There's a lot of brokers out there, a lot of successful ones. To me, it seems like a lot of it comes down to just the tenacity and the willingness to work hard and the willingness to do the right thing to make your brokerage successful. Do you, are there some other keys you'd kind of tell people about that are going through or thinking about doing their own brokerage at this point? Uh, really, you just hit it spot on. That's for anything in life. 
kind of just, you know, be persistent with it. And uh, you're going to have your ups and downs, but you got to keep going. Because, uh, I mean, the only time you fail is when you stop. So no matter, I mean, I've had some hard times myself, had customers that haven't paid me. I pay out of pocket. I'm, I owe the company $3,700. So I just paid out of pocket. So, but that's not going to make me quit. You know, I've been through worse. I've had less money. I've had way less time. So just grind it out and keep going. Don't stop. I got to think that's a huge advantage because you know how bad it can be, right? You, you, <laughs> you've been there. A lot of people haven't. They're like, oh, my business fails. The worst thing that could happen to me. You're like, no, 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 no. There, <laughs> no there, there's worse. way worse that could happen. Like, way worse. Trust, trust me. So <laughs> it's got to give you a unique perception, though, to those things where it's kind of like, yeah, I'll just that, that doesn't bother me so much. I've, I've been there, done that. I know I can get through this. So you have a, you have a really awesome story about everything. Um, if people are listening to this, uh, why, why don't you, let's talk about the name of your company a little bit. How can they find you? How can they find your brokerage? Give a, you know, a little self-promotion here. Okay. Well, the company name is Ameriton Freight and Logistics. Uh, it's AmeritonFreight.com. You can find me on any social media plug, uh, Kenneth Carter, the Roman number three on LinkedIn, at Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. It's all Ameriton Freight. I promote it. I promote it all over the place. So man, I you know again, I'm old. I have so tried to do Instagram and Twitter, and I just I just can't do it, man. Like I, I do good on LinkedIn, I, I just can't. I guess I'm I guess I'm getting too old. Do you get traction at all in our industry in those in, in our niche and our transportation, or is it is it not really there? Uh, I'm the old guy too. I just take a picture <laughs> and post it. <laughs> I don't know what happens from there. <laughs> Well, awesome, Matt. I, I just, again, want to thank you for coming on, sharing your story. I think it's really inspirational what you're doing. Um, you definitely have the right attitude. Things are going great. Just know we're always here to help you with anything if you ever need anything or I can I can help you with something, man. I just, I, I love seeing stories like this. And I think a lot of times people get in their heads, someone acted one way a certain time period ago that they're, they're always that person. And you're living proof, I think, that people can change and, and do the right thing and be inspirational and, and turn their lives around. So thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you so much. Awesome. Well, with that said, everybody, it is another wrap for the DL. I want to thank all of you again for your time. It's much appreciated. And as we end every episode, it's just not diagnostics. It's diagnostics done right. And thank you for watching and listening. Mm -hmm.